How do you say that current banking valuations remain cheap in Nigeria? Yeah, so what, what we did was to actually consider the impact of all these headwinds, uh, the higher cost of risk. We expect cost of risk to be higher by about 40 basis points for our COVID banks. Also consider the impact of non-recurring FX revaluation gains uh, that banks had last year. And when we factored all these into the banks, we, we noticed that for our, for our COVID banks, which is tier one bank and Standic, uh, we found that, that the ROE is still robust at 21%. Uh, the Nigerian banks trading at the 2019 E price to book of about 0 0.9 times uh, compared to Kenya, account, uh, Kenya exactly. banks trading at about 1.2 times on a lower ROE of 18%. We find that after you take account of all these um, estimates, actually the Nigerian banks are, are quite cheap. So what do these comparisons and valuations with banks across um, Kenya, you mentioned Middle East and African banks, what do they tell us specifically about valuations of the banking sector within Nigeria? So they, they, they tell us that the valuations are very cheap. Uh, you look at um, the average uh, return on equity of these Kenya banks, you see that about 18%. You look at Nigeria, despite the headwinds and uh, posting, uh, for our COVID, posting at about a, an ROE of about 21%. If you are just uh, on an ROE basis, this implies that the Nigerian bank should be trading at at least 1.3 times price to book. And they are currently at 0 0.9 times to book. That's about 45% for, for discount to, to current levels. Let's take a step back. What key themes would you say impacted Nigeria's banking sector in the last one year? So in the last one year, uh, what the banking sector had, had experienced is higher interest income, uh, sorry, um, FX revaluation gains uh, that prompted earnings. You see uh, banks like GTB posting about 40 billion, banks like um, uh, uh, First Bank also posted about 20 billion in um, FX revaluation gain. What we also had last year was lower cost of risk. And that, and that was because of the IFRS 9 implementation. So that gives the banks the leeway to actually take a lot of provisions through equity. You find um, banks like GTB posting cost of risk of about 0 0.3 uh, three times. So these are one of the events that kept, uh, that boosted earnings. In fact, banks like Stambic had uh, significant write backs. So cost of risk was very low last year. But coming into 2019, we don't expect this to be the case because um, now the banks will have to take any additional provisions through their uh, PML. And also, uh, loan growth was weak last year, and we expect loan growth to be stronger this year. And because of that, there's going to be more of 12 months expected credit losses. Uh, this is the on the back of the new IFRS 9. Yeah, much ado about the IFRS yeah. 9 um, regulation. Speak to me on your thoughts on the bank, on, on the general response of banks in Nigeria to that. Uh, so I think the way banks implemented it was um, a lot of them delayed, you know, the actual implementation to when auditors came. Why resistance? Uh, uh, so I think the issue is, uh, well, maybe understanding the IFRS 9 itself. Uh, also, it, it could also be the issue of the capital implication. Take, for instance, uh, uh, by a bank like First Bank, uh, until Q4, they didn't actually recognize the full in, uh, IFRS 9 provision. I advise my provision as at um, half year was around 28 billion, but by full year it went up to about 213 billion. Are banks at liberty to choose what time they get to recognize the IFRS 9 provisions? I thought that would be uh, like the generally binding. The was supposed to be January, and you know we had a similar case with also Diamond Bank, you know, until Q4 before the actual thing was done. So I think a lot of them waited, waited for auditors to come in, and also because the um, accounting principle is new, so I, I think also that might also there might be some knowledge gap which the bank took time to actually adjust. To. Clement, is this connected to reports that um, due to the implementation of the IFRS 9, banks uh, had uh, like some one trillion naira script off their capital basis across? Yeah, that's that's actually very possible because you have um, First Bank over 200 billion loss cap loss in capital. GTB over 130 be about 130 billion, then over 100 billion. So yeah, I agree. I think up, up to if you consider the, in, the cumulated impact on, on all the banks, it could be close to one trillion. So help us understand now what key themes to look out for as impacting so, these valuations in the year 2019. So in regards to IFRS 9, uh, I think what the bank, what the CBN has done is to create a transition window, a window where the bank absorb the impact of the IFRS 9 provision gradually over time. So uh, if you look at uh, First Bank as a case in point, uh, the full impact of IFRS 9 actually brought the capital decrease ratio of the bank to about 10.7%. But thanks to the uh, CBN transition policy, they are able to actually report uh, a, a capital decrease ratio of about 17.3%, which, which will keep them out of being breaching the regulatory minimum of 16%. So what the, bank, what the CBN has done is just to create a three-year window where the bank gradually take a portion of the IFRS 9 provision 
in competing their capital adequacy ratio over the next three years. So that will help ease the process of um, having uh, capital issues for the Nigerian banks. And what other features will affect the banking valuations for the year 2019? So uh, for, for the year 2019, we need to look at for the yield environment. Our analysis shows that um, for about a 100 basis, basis point decline in yield of government security, asset yield and ARI can be down by 50 basis points. So what we've seen is effectively, compared to the average of last year, yields are down by 100 basis points. But where we are, our worry comes from is if we see further decline in, um, in yield, maybe under 100 or 200 basis points. Because the growth environment is still fragile, we don't expect credit growth to be six, very significant this year. And so on the back of that, lower yields can materially, um, further decline in yields can materially impact profitability of the banks. The 50 basis points rate cut that we saw well, at the CBN's um, MPC, what impact did that have on valuations? Uh, that did not have so much impact on valuation. Uh, on interest income, it's almost insignificant. Well, but where the impact comes in is, uh, is on funding cost. So from our analysis, we believe that uh, it's about just seven basis points um, improvement in funding cost. And that's because the savings uh, rate is actually tied to the MP NPR rate. So 30% of the NPR rate is the rate used to, to uh, for, for interest on savings uh, deposits. So the conditionalities that we're looking at, the declining yields and government securities, the 50% basis point cut that we spoke about, um, the outlook for cost of risks as well as regulatory uncertainty are still in industry dynamics. Yes. So what macro conditionalities would the banking valuations respond to? Uh, so f for the banks, I think it's more or less of um, the interest from investors because of um, the policies uh, the Nigerian system is looking at. So because policies are not great yet, people are actually sidelining the Nigerian market. So yes, the, they see the uh, strong fundamentals of these banks, but because from a top-down perspective, people are not uh, positive on the growth of the Nigerian economy. So I, and I think that's what people are looking at, uh, and that's why valuation are currently depressed. And when RMB says now it's time to take the leap, what does it mean? Yeah, I think you should be buying now because we think at these levels, uh, especially for the quality names that we, which we've highlighted, the GTB, the Zenit, the UBA, we think valuations are very cheap and at a significant discount. You say buy the banks. Yeah, buy the banks.